I've now got to uh, think about how to fit the uh, strike train into the clock. Um, the thing to do is to start at the bottom and make sure that that's the winding square for the great wheel on the uh, going side and the one that's on the strike side is going to need to be the same spacing from the centre as that one is so it goes into there and the same height up from the bottom as there and the reason for that is this is the plate at the front and it will have two holes drilled for the winding squares and they will look awful if they're not equally spaced up and down and side to side from the centre. So <clears throat> that my next task is to fit this main um, shaft, or rather arbour, into between the plates here at the right centre and in the right position. The rest of the arbours, that's a solid brass one obviously and that's exactly the same as the one that um, Harrison made. He did his solid brass. Um, the rest of the arbours um, Harrison chose uh, to use wood and in his early clocks uh, the arbours were of boxwood like this. The later clocks for some reason used oak which isn't such a good wood and it's very difficult to turn it nice and smooth. Um, this is turned reasonably well um, but the graining is still too coarse really for my liking and I don't I won't use that. Um, if you want to turn oak, a tip from me that the best way to turn it in a lathe is to use these very sharp carbide bits that are used for boring and I use them both for boring and for facing. And uh, do you want to know whether you, whether you can see that? Oh, it's in focus. They are incredibly shiny and sharp. Um, they're very, very good for turning wood and metals, um, but they're very springy. But in wood, it doesn't matter at all because um, they're quite thin. Um, and they're from Banggood, uh, and they're easily the best of these small turning tools that you can buy anywhere. Um, I'm very glad to an Australian chappy who uh, had um, reviewed these, and I've used them, and I say, use it for turning as well as for boring, uh, in wood at any rate. So the choice for arbours is whether you make them of oak, whether you make them of boxwood, and then if you drill the ends, or drill them right through, I think that's what Harrison did, and the pivots are just simply small bits of brass about that long with a point on the end um, and they stick out from the end of here um, and uh, th there's very little brass used in it uh, so there's an a hole in there that drills from end to end well get drilling a hole straight in wood is jolly difficult and the only way to do it accurately would be to drill a hole straight through in one go first and then um, turn the rest of the outside um, on a mandrel so that you've got something through it that's held in the chuck at one end and uh, the centre at the other end and then you just turn the outside until it's parallel to it um, but that seems awfully difficult to do and unnecessary brass is relatively straightforward um, not, not expensive, it's nice and hard um, and turns beautifully so what I shall be using is 4mm brass to go straight through so effectively the I'll use uh, boxwood the outer part of the arbour will be boxwood and that'll have a hole drilled through it and this will be like sleevings that go onto the outside of it which give the impression of being uh, solid wood but actually are only really a covering so these arbours that I made on the 
let's see if you can see those um, on the going side uh, made that way so there's solid brass through here and and that's worked well um, so it does at least mean that everything runs nice and true without any difficulty so um, I shall be mounting this first between the plates then I shall be turning up some brass and I've cut this one to length already um, and the end of the pivots will protrude past the just slightly past the end of the plates I'll depth everything and fit it all into the plates um, I'll be making uh, the shaft the arbors in br solid brass first which will enable me to position where these wheels come and obviously I start with the first shell the first arbor but which is at the bottom <coughs> which will show me where to mount the first of the uh, pinions so I think I'll come back when I've got this into the between the plates now one thing I should suggest that you do is that oh you should do on the plates you'll see a little tiny mark on the top there where there's a brass pin and there's a corresponding one at the bottom here um, and that allows me to index both plates together or register them together uh, so that I've got them held square and uh, any hole drilled through can be uh, parallel uh, with the front uh, at right angles to the front surface right so if I strip all this off uh, front all the um, um, gears off the front um, and um, then I can start making up the uh, strike train I've now marked out on here slightly darker so that hopefully you can see it the gear train which is as follows that wheel goes there which is that arc there that's a great wheel position and then here is the next wheel which goes there and you can see the arc of the wheel going there and then the next wheel goes in there and that's its arc going around there and um, I haven't got the other wheel with me but it's just over there drying off with some glue on it which goes in there and the final one with the fly on it at the warning wheel that goes up at the top um, and this pinion goes here this pinion goes here this one goes here and that one goes at the top so I'm happy now <coughs> that having done the depthing uh, that this will lay out this layout will work I will have to alter it slightly as I go through um, and I'll need to just make sure that when I'll drill this hole first and then depth across from with my depthing tool to here to check to make sure that's in the right place um, before I drill it and what I'll do is I'll drill everything first in the oak check the depthing's correct and then I can consider putting in bushes after that but I don't want to put a bush in straight away because I'd like to drill the bush so that at the centre of it is concentric with the outside it just makes it easier so that's the layout of um, the plate uh, the ones that are here for the uh, going side you can see a very faint mark across here another wheel here with the pinion that's another wheel that's a pinion and there's a very faint trace on there um, and um, the final one up there so um, I think I'll leave these in for posterity so whoever takes the clock apart in the future will see 
how the train was marked out. I always think it's quite fun to have some original layout marks and they're not visible once the clock's in position. So the next job is to drill this here um, and um, get my first arbor in. I've uh, set this um, great wheel and its mating pinion into the depthing tool just to check on the depthing again. It's nice and smooth at that distance and if I just check across this between the two Ninety two point five six, two point five six, and subtract four point eight six for the thickness of these. That's eighty seven point seven, and the theoretical distance is eighty seven point eight, so that's pretty much spot on. I'm happy enough with that. Now, what I'm looking for on this plate is when I depth one of the holes in here and then I swing this round like a compass, it should follow that line there. So we'll try that next. So I just remove these from here. Just put this round so that the camera can see what I'm doing. Now I have to make absolutely certain that this does not lie across like that or I'll get a, an odd reading. So I have to make sure help align it. Now I've just put that in position so it's sitting on here, it's parallel so that that, that point and that point are sitting parallel and if you look at this point of here, I said I wanted to be on that on that line there, and it is. In fact, I could feel it when I was at that point there. It's actually dropped into the little um, hole that I'd made in order to um, run the compass in in there. It actually was sitting in that hole, so I know that that is correct exact distance. The, the main problem when you're doing these is that this hole here can wander off because it's quite a big hole and um, this hole is less of a problem because it's smaller. Uh, so, uh, But I've still got to drill it out uh, to take a bush. So I'll probably be something uh, a little bit smaller diameter than that. So I'm going to be on six millimeters diameter uh, but I can um, use a centre drill to make sure that it's it's centred up and doesn't wander off. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So once I've got that drilled, um, I'll drill it first for the pivot size, which I haven't yet done. The pivot will be made out of the end of this. Um, and I'll probably make that about um, two millimetres, I would think. Yeah, about two millimetres for the first pivot. And there's a, a fair bit of stress on it. Um, and um, uh, then I can, when I'm happy that that and that make properly with that unbushed, I'll just widen the hole out.
So that's depthing um, as I like to use it. The main thing you've got to make sure with the depthing tool is that it is absolutely sitting so that that hole and that hole are on the same plane. Okay. I've drilled now and put the arbor in here. Yeah. A little bit too much in shake, um, but never mind. Um, the uh, pinion isn't secured yet, and it'll just be secured with Loctite, um, and I can get the ultimate position of the foot to be concerned about the amount of movement here in this shaft, in this arbor, and in this arbor, and I don't want it to touch on the outside shrouds. So. I need to get it in the absolute optimum position. But as you can see, the mating of that is absolutely perfect. So all I need to do now is to drill out the holes in here and fit into there um, a bush, uh, a ligand vitae bush. Uh, perhaps one thing I should say is uh, when fitting the lignum vitae um, you can adjust the amount of um, clearance in the holes by using clockmaker's brooches which you may or may not have seen before um, and they work fine in lignum vitae. The way I fit the bushes that I make is to fit them from the inside of the frame not the outside and press them in with the drill press rather than tap them in with a hammer. And I made the bushes uh, point oh four under uh, oversize so that they fit nicely in and they're not going to come out I made them exactly the right length. So they can they've gone in fine, they're easy to do. Now you can see <coughs> that this arbor here is bushed. And um, the motion is pretty free. And that's the bush on the, the back. I will cut down the amount of float in there, out in shape, a bit too much. And the, the bearing fits are on because it's just a little bit too tight. I'm sure I can do this a little bit looser and make it run smoother. And you can hear it squeaking very slightly. You probably won't hear it on the video, but it's obviously just a shade too tight anyway. I just finished off the second arbor and wheel complete. Very pleased with it, very nice depth thing, until I tried to fit the wheel and the great wheel together in the final position. And they sort of fit, but unfortunately this arbour and this arbour are too close together and they're rubbing 
and I've still got the winding string to put round here. So <coughs> I have faced with how to rectify the problem. Um, I wasn't sure whether to correct it and show it to you finished or whether I'd show you the correction I was going to make. Um, <coughs> but I think I've decided I'll show you the correction. We're not all perfect, we all make mistakes. And that was a stupid one and all the more annoying because everything up till now had been pretty good. Um, I can explain to you the only solution I can come up with. I did turn the uh, groove that I'd cut in here down um, so that the string and I turned it down a little bit in diameter so it's more or less the same size as it was on the original clock uh, and it doesn't matter so much on the strike side as the going side anyway um, so I'm, I'll leave that as it is except I'll have to remake this wheel and make it larger and so if I take the top plate where I've marked my circles and I'll show you what I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to make this wheel larger um, and if I make it um, the same size as it was on the original clock it's going to be um, just over six millimeters more in diameter and then the pinion that mates with it will also have to be remade slightly larger um, which will give me over six millimeters so that this will be here it doesn't has it have any conflict with this on the going side which is what I was worried about and uh, um, it's just a lot of extra annoying extra work to have to do I won't change the position of these holes and I've checked that um, the bottom position of uh, this wheel doesn't project below the bottom of the case so it's very close to it and all my problems have been brought around by brought about <coughs> by making the frame of the clock slightly smaller uh, than it was on the original um, so I've had to squeeze everything in and I did make this wheel this great wheel a little bit smaller in diameter than the original was um, and um, that was a mistake and I didn't check. That's annoying. So everything was up till now been going very well. I had no problems. So the next, the next thing I've got to do is remake the great wheel. Um, and that's going to be um, 160 one millimeters uh, pitch circle diameter rather than 150 and the pinion that goes with it is correspondingly larger as well I hope you don't mind this being a, uh, showing a problem um, but I guess you know we all have problems that we have to overcome um, the one thing I have discovered um, when I was looking at this is you, you can see it here and there's a split here which has appeared um, and there's also another one here so um, and I can see a split on the inside there so obviously this ring is going to be prone to splits and, and bits coming off uh, as the original on the Nostal Pari clock is there's a chunk come off there I notice so I'm in two minds now whether to make this ring in plywood I've had I probably will because it's a bit more stable um, but I can decide that when I'm when I've made up the the wheel I've got parts gluing at the moment so that's my next job I won't bother you with um, making it because it's made exactly the same way as this is um, but I will um, show you the result and the depth thing and how I'd get around this problem here so I'll probably just put these aren't of course glued in they're pushed in they're a press fit so I'll just press them out um, and I'll replace them with um, a solid oak pin I think 
it uh, fits in, in, it fills in the hole, and I'll glue them in. <sighs> Never mind, problems to overcome.